Hi, I'm Scott Holliday. I play guitar for the Rival Sons. Hello there. I'm JB Cannon, and I sing for the Rival Sons. Got together four years ago. Um, Scott got with Miley, and then uh, Miley got Robin. And Notable that they uh, met each other at a uh, Robin and Miley met each other at a uh, a gig a jazz gig at Isaac A's home. So basically, the uh, three of us played with a, a different singer in a band and uh, made a record. And then um, kind of we were all kind of feeling like we wanted to find somebody else we wanted to partner up with. I, I certainly was as a writer and a performer, and uh, kind of haphazardly just came across Jay's website and uh, clicked on it really innocently to like oh yeah I heard of this guy and um, loved it and felt like you know lightning struck the tip of my wing yeah. and felt like it was immediately time to contact this fella and uh, I told the fellows about, about Jay I found this guy Jay Buchanan ended up being one of uh, uh, Michael's best buddies for a long time so, so I uh, contacted Jay and me and Jay talked and uh qualifying each other on a bunch of different music old blues lots of old rock and roll new rock and roll and uh, we got together and and Shazam we decided to just keep jamming for a little bit and it took a, just a little bit for us to decide to book a gig and we um, we started playing and uh, people just started really getting behind it and supporting us and I was uh I, I felt like we were a good band and everything, but the amount of support that we got was really surprising. Pressure time was about 20 days in the studio, of recording and mixing, kind of mixed as we went along. Yeah, wrote it on the spot, decided we didn't want to write before we went in, that we wanted to uh, do something very very uh, off the cuff and immediate. I think that that one was really, we were out doing a U.S. tour and we were really busy touring, touring, and uh, we knew that we were going to go into the studio to make the Pressure and Time record. Our whole team, our management, the label, everybody, you know, they asked us like three weeks before we went in, yeah, so how's the writing going? How are the songs? Yeah, we're not gonna write until we get in there. We're gonna do this. Everybody was looking at us like, what? What? You don't have any, so you're going into the studio, you know, the label's putting money behind you. We're all working, trying to make this thing work, and you're, you guys don't have any songs, and you seem really cool with it. What's the matter with you guys? I come from uh, doing, I, I worked on uh, Atlantic with a band, Atlantic Records, and uh, it was a totally different process. It was a vicious process where they wanted to hear demos, they wanted to hear pre-production, they wanted all this elaborate stuff, and, and you would turn in a demo, and then, then you'd sit around, 10 people would make comments about what's working and not working, what we should keep and not keep, and then I just remember losing hair over it and just going, this is so ridiculous, this is a ridiculous process. Like these suits are telling us like what they think is gonna go on the record. And we, we knew before we even set foot in the studio, this band is not that, and it will never, ever be that. And more than that, we, we just wanted to put ourselves in a position to create something very immediate, like so many of our heroes or our favorite records where you hear they were made in three days or 10 days or whatever, you know what I mean? We wanted to give that a go and see how it would work. You know, I mean, before the fire was written to a, a, a certain degree, the same exact way, even before Jay was in the group. So we knew, let's follow suit, and keep that up. Nashville, it came about because we work with Dave Cobb. You know, we've worked with him on every record we've done. And he moved out there, so we went to him. And we love Nashville, you know. 
on top of all of that. So we're going to go to Nashville to make a record. Definitely. Yeah, that's fine. Definitely probably the musical hub of the United States, right? Now. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, you basically take Nashville, Austin. That's it. But it's like Nashville's Music City. Music City, USA. So it was a pleasure to be there. We stayed in a little cottage down in Leaper's Fork, just south, south of the city, away from all of the hubbub. And uh, it was a really, really good environment, you know. It was a lot of pressure to put ourselves through uh, for three weeks, but um, we, were in, we were in the right place at the right time to make that record, I feel. We had friends, other touring musicians there and everything that happened to be there like, hey, let's go out and get a drink. Hey, man, uh, let's meet over at 12th and Porter or just whatever and never had time because we were working around the clock so there was never time to like get out and go enjoy Nashville that way it was really just from our cottage and then the rural route on the highway up to the studio and then back again. We did stay in a, a historical part a part of Nashville called Leapers Fork so at least we did get to kind of submerge this old historical part of Nashville in our daily drives and stuff and maybe have some old staple singers on as we're going in or some really good old music and kind of felt the energy of this place. We plan on uh, making another record as soon as humanly possible. As soon as we can get back into the studio, we're going to do that. Um, trouble is, is uh, you know, this record doesn't break in the United States until late March. So, um, we're, you know, we have to be out on the road, but we're really looking to get into the studio immediately because, yeah, it's been almost a year since we recorded this record. And so artistically, you know, we need to validate ourselves and, and maintain our, our pace. So we look to record another record and it's just going to be a whole lot of touring and more videos and more interviews. Cheers, man.